Hi, I'm Clint Johnson. I'm a product leader here for parts and oil category. I'm here with Amory Cool, senior staff clutching engineer, to help educate us on why Polaris engineered belts are superior versus aftermarket. Amory, let's get started. Can you show us why a Polaris consumer should only use a Polaris engineered belt? Absolutely, Clint. Polaris engineered belts are specifically designed for the applications that they go in. Whereas aftermarket companies are designing their belt for a wide variety of applications, maybe snowmobiles, maybe ATVs, or even side-by-sides. Because of that, a lot of compromises are made along the way. Three big differentiators stand out to me. The first is the dimensions. Because Polaris Engineering works hand-in-hand -hand with the powertrain group and the CVT belt manufacturers, we ensure that the belts are made to the exact specifications that are required for the application. Additionally, Polaris CVT Engineering and the powertrain group work cooperatively throughout the entire program to ensure that you get the smoothest drive away on your vehicle, as well as the most power to the track at wide open throttle. And finally, because we work so very closely with the CVT belt manufacturers, we gain access to proprietary rubber compounds and processes that aren't always going to be available in many of the aftermarket offerings. Amory, if a customer is needing to replace a belt, why would you use a Polaris engineered belt over an aftermarket? Clint, there's three things that come to my mind. The very first is the belt face angles. As you can see, the Polaris engineered belt has the tightest control of belt face angles. What this means to you is the shortest possible break-in because it doesn't take as long as some of the aftermarket offerings to match the belt face angle to the sheave. So while others with aftermarket belts may be still breaking in their belt 50 or even 100 miles after it's been installed, you're able to use the full potential of your CVT belt after that 30 mile break-in with a Polaris engineered belt. The second would be all ride out and dimensional capabilities. As you can see here, the Polaris standard is extremely tight for ride out control of the belt and we control the width to exacting quantities. The result to you for that is you don't need to adjust belt tension or even worse, readjust the shimming in the spider in order to achieve the proper belt to sheave clearance. This reduces downtime, trips to the dealership and ensures that you're getting the maximum performance of your CVT belt right away when it's installed. And finally, is POC or vibration variation. This is how tightly the belt acts over as it rotates around and in the clutches. Many of the aftermarket offerings have substantially more vibration variation. What this means to you is jerkiness when you're driving away, causing unneeded track spin if you're in very light snow conditions, or reducing the control of the vehicle as you're trying to drive away from that gas pump or tow a sled. Thanks, Amory. Sounds like we've covered the pre-break-in differences. What about the long-term differences and why Polaris engineered belts should be used? Absolutely, Clint. Polaris engineered belts continue to be superior long after that initial break-in. Because we work with the CVT belt manufacturers, Polaris engineered belts have the maximum cord adhesion capability of any of the aftermarket offerings. Additionally, we have extremely high tensile strength capabilities to keep the cords where they need to be and support all that power and tension that belts develop, whether you're blasting across a lake or going up a huge chute. And finally, the superior flexibility, particularly at cold temperatures down to minus 30 Fahrenheit, ensure that your belt is ready to go in the morning just like you are. As you can see, the adhesion of the cord to the belt is in excess of two times the strength of some of the aftermarket offerings. Due to a patented cord processing technique that Polaris and its CVT belt manufacturer use, we have the highest adhesion of any of the aftermarket offerings of the cord to the rubber belt material. This helps ensure that no matter how hard you're driving up a chute or fast across a lake, that the cord stays where it is meant to be, embedded into the rubber of the belt. The second attribute is tensile strength, and you'll appreciate this over the long haul. Because Polaris engineered belts are near the top of all the offerings for tensile strength, you can be assured that no matter how hard you ride or how much power you're producing, that there's adequate tensile strength in your CVT belt to handle all that torque. Finally, cold flex. 
A way that some aftermarket companies achieve CVT belts that can handle the extreme conditions that Polaris original equipment belts handle is by using rubbers that perform better at high temperatures. Unfortunately, that results in much poorer cold flex capability. As a result, on those very cold mornings, it's possible with an aftermarket belt that the rubber simply cracks because of how brittle and stiff it is in the morning. Be assured, with Polaris engineered CVT belts, this is not a concern. Amory, what will a customer notice if they switch to an aftermarket belt? Clint, there are some very common complaints that customers have when switching to an aftermarket belt. The first, and probably the most common, is a change in operating RPM. Depending on the belt material and construction, aftermarket belts may run higher or lower RPM. As a result, in order just to get your machine to function as it did when it was originally produced, clutch tuning kits and aftermarket tuning is often required. Additionally, you can't get started on that tuning right away. As I mentioned earlier, due to the variation in the angle of the belt, long break-in times can often be expected. So you have a bit of a moving target in how your machine operates for the first 50, maybe even 100 miles of operation. And even so, you have to wait that long before you can really unleash the true potential of your machine on that aftermarket belt. As highlighted earlier, due to the superior cord adhesion and compelling tensile strength of Polaris engineered belts, you can be assured that Polaris will give a much longer overall life of the CVT belt day in and day out. And finally, those exacting tolerances that Polaris holds on the length and width of the belt allow you to begin riding right away without the need for expensive and unnecessary service of your CVT system in order to guarantee proper belt to sheave clearance. The requirement to adjust the belt tension is also minimized due to, again, the exacting tolerances of a Polaris engineered belt. How much does Polaris invest in testing their belt? Polaris is absolutely committed to the development, testing, and validation of our CVT belts. Work on any new belt design begins nearly two years before it's released. And even before we begin to put power to the snow, we've already begun testing belts on dyno. To the tune of over 1,200 CVT belts that we used last year on those dynos alone. We finally round out all that dyno testing by putting real validation miles. To the tune of 40,000 real world miles on the snow in a snowmobile. Riding how you ride in mountains, trails, lakes, and everything in between, just to prove that it will absolutely perform day in and day out to your expectations. Amory, can you hit on the importance of break-in? CVT belt break-in is critical to the longevity of your CVT belt. On Polaris snowmobiles, the break-in is 30 miles. During this 30 mile break-in, you need to make sure to vary the throttle position and keep it under about 50% and limit full throttle use to an absolute minimum. Additionally, brand new CVT drive belts should be washed in warm, soapy water and allowed to air dry before their very first use. It's good practice to always take time to warm up the belt and driveline in the mornings prior to operating your snowmobile. Also, free the track and skis from any frozen ground before attempting to engage the throttle on that first time in the morning. How does a, a rider identify a used belt? There will be a variety of signals that will indicate that your CVT belt may be getting war. The first is low RPM. Often as CVT belts begin to wear, their coefficient of friction will change and you'll notice that the throttle response is not quite as crisp as it was originally. You can observe this as slightly lower RPM at wide open throttle as well. Any signs of cogs becoming cracked, particularly on the inner cogs, will also be a good indication that your CVT belt is reaching the end of its life. Also watch out for top cogs that may be coming delaminated or coming loose from the cord line. This also may happen with the inner cogs as the CVT belt is reaching the end of its life. And finally, keep an eye out for any indication that there's cords pulling out of the sides of the belt. The, the example of a popped cord may indicate that your belt is on its last leg. Finally, if you notice a, an abrupt jerkiness on drive away, it's possible that you may have damaged your belt due to an hourglassing type of event. This is another surefire indication that your CVT belt needs to be serviced. What recommendations should dealers be giving their customers if they have questions on their belt or setup? 
you should always refer to the maintenance schedule that came with your snowmobile. Also, monitor the hours and miles on a belt. Just as important as proper maintenance is always having a spare CVT belt on hand. All Polaris snowmobiles have a proper position engineered to hold the exact belt that that snowmobile is designed for on your snowmobile. Don't let a failed belt ever ruin your day. For any additional information, you can reach out to the Polaris Help Center at polaris.com.